nice view out to sea. We're at a upper observation level. Looking up towards the summit there. It's a bit cloudy today, but we do have patches of clear sky. And here's the setup. Lovely Matt taking some or oh, doing some computer stuff. Renaming folders. Renaming folders. And there's the spectrometers and the UV cameras. It's 9.46 a.m. We just come up Stromboli with an hour and a half of hiking. And it's a beautiful day, finally. We were unlucky with the weather the last couple of days, but now that luck has improved. And we have this wonderful plume. You can see some great puffs, large puffs of distinct rhythm of the Yaki. So here we are in Stromboli still, getting a little break in the cloud. And this is PhD student at Manchester, Ben Essay, who's just going to say a few words about the research he's doing with uh, these devices. Cool, so my kit is the, what you see on the left here. What we've got is two collimating lenses. Uh, we've got a UV sensitive or UV possible, UV transparent I should say, lenses. These then run down to our spectrometers which are here in a dark bag. And what we're doing here is we're using ultraviolet spectroscopy. So we're looking at the ultraviolet spectroscopy from the volcano plume to see if there's an effect of uh, when ash is present in the plume versus when it's just SO2. And here we have our laptop which is analysing our data in real time. We've got nice spectra coming out. And what you can see on the top here is we've got a, a rough and ready real-time readout of the SO2 amounts that we're getting. And here we have the spectrum that we're actually measuring uh, and some control parameters as well here. Good. And what's the overall objective of what you're trying to do by looking at the ash? So we want to see if we can uh, measure ash and what uh, characteristics we can get from the ash uh, from the ultraviolet spectrometers. And this is really key because the ultraviolet spectrometers that we're using are already in use for measuring... Oh, here we go. Sorry, Ben. I just walked in front of it. <laughs> And, and how, how often have you done these measurements so far? So this is the first time we've been in the field, uh, but we've been measuring for three days. Twice we've been down uh, at the bottom here in Stromboli. Uh, this is our first day up on the summit. Um, and our first day of uh, good weather, <laughs> which is a relative term. Yeah. 
but it's been we've got some sunshine today which is good so hopefully we'll get some good data i'm confident cool thanks very much man. thank you Right, so this is, is this good time? Yeah, so this yeah. is um, Matthew Varnum, who's okay. another first year PhD student at Manchester. Uh, can you just tell us what you're up to? Okay, so on the right we have my pieces of kit. So these are two UV sensitive cameras. Um, and then on the front, we have two different filters on each one. Um, one of them is 310 nanometers, and then the other is 330 nanometers. And the reason why we choose those particular um, wavelengths is that the 310 nanometers is sensitive to both sulfur dioxide and aerosol particles, whereas the 330 nanometers is only sensitive to the aerosols. And so doing a bit of fancy computer work, we can then eliminate the signal that we get from the aerosols and produce some really clear pictures of the sulfur dioxide as it uh, comes out of the volcano. Cool. And uh, what's the kind of ultimate aim of, of measuring with the SO2 gas concentrations? What, what's, uh, what can you get from that? So learning a bit about the uh, sulfur dioxide tells you quite a lot about what's happening um, further down in the volcano. So sulfur dioxide tends to um, degas uh, quite a high level in the magma chamber um, and so when you see the sulfur dioxide you know that's come from kind of quite high up and then if you can compare with some other gases um, using maybe some other pieces of kit that we don't have here today then you can find out kind of where that magma is um, like what depth it's at in the system. Cool.